Hi, my name is Martha Zink and I'm with Salian Consulting and this is another video in the series Unboxing FileMaker 14. In this video I'm going to talk about the script workspace again but instead of talking about the interface I'm really going to focus on keyboard shortcuts and how you're going to be able to write scripts and manage scripts a lot faster with the keyboard. Now let me just point out that I'm on a Mac so when I use these keyboard shortcuts I might be using the command key versus on the Windows machine it would actually be the control key. So even though I'll say command key throughout this whole video, if you're on the Windows side make sure that you're using the control key instead. So let me start off by just creating a blank new script and I can go in here and let's just call this test script. Now I apologize I don't think I'm going to write a very coherent script here. I really just want to show you what you can do with the keyboard so it may feel a little bit random as we go through the process. I gave the script a name, now I'm going to hit the return key, and basically I'm right in the script now and I have the ability to start writing out my script. Now if you're not new to FileMaker then you're probably used to naturally going over to the script steps and hunting for the one that you want and doing some more hunting and some more hunting until you can find exactly what you're looking for. It can actually be a very tedious process. Now it's much easier because we can actually stay on the keyboard. So the biggest example would be the if statement. Normally if I wanted to add the if statement in an older version I'd go over to my script steps, I would find if and double click on it and it would drop it right into my script. Now I can actually start typing, so if I start typing if you'll see that it automatically starts selecting things that match my criteria. Now if is in all of these, actually something that starts with an I is in all of these and it has if selected because it's the one that starts with the I which is the first thing I've typed. Once FileMaker has actually highlighted something I want, I can just hit the return key and it'll automatically add that script step. The beauty is that it's still as smart as it was before, so when I choose something like if, it's smart enough to go ahead and continue adding the end if. So we'll say if get script parameter equals one. Again, we'll pretend that we're sending something through a script parameter. Then I can hit command return and I'm right at my next line and we can set a field. So normally I would start typing set and then field and there it is for me to select. But a nice little shortcut that they gave us is the ability to type in the first letter of multiple words. We'll get there faster. So if I go in here and I hit command return. So just to be clear, I'm going to be using the command key because I'm on a Mac. On the Windows, that's actually going to translate to control. So now I can go in here and say I want to add set field, but instead of typing the word set, then a space, and then F for set field, which will work, I can actually just type in SF and it's smart enough to say that I'm looking for a word that starts with S and a word that starts with F. So you'll see that set field is highlighted and there's my script step when I hit return. This is really nice for ones that are really common that we're used to. For example, GTRR for go to related record is one that we use all the time. So now we don't have to actually hunt for it. We can just type the first few letters. And this is really meaningful because if we were to look at go to, if we were to type the whole thing, there are a lot of options. So just typing in GTRR, I can hit return and there is my big script step. So you'll notice that once I've actually typed the go to related record, hit return to actually select that script step. It still leaves me on that script step. It's active and I can tell because it's highlighted. And if I hit the space bar, it's actually going to trigger whatever component belongs to that script step. Now here's a place where I will actually have to go back to my mouse because this is formatted to similar to the way it was before. So I can go in here and say get related records from contacts and I can go to a different layout and so on. So there's still the need for the mouse, just not as much. Then once I'm done, I can hit command to return and I can keep on adding my script steps. Now let me go ahead and add a loop. So I can just type in LO and then hit the return can I get loop. And I can go in here and I can start adding something like maybe I just want to add a comment. The nice thing with a comment is you just have to hit pound and then you can type. So this is a comment. And then let's say I want to set a field. So we're going to SF for set field. Now set field has two components. I'm going to hit the space bar and you'll see that I have the ability to set the target field and set the calculated result. Now there's a gray highlight on the target field. So if I hit the space bar again, it's going to let me choose the field. And if I just use the up and down arrows, it lets me choose the fields from the current table. Once I hit return, it takes me back to that pop-up and I can use the up and down arrows to basically navigate between the different pieces. So I can choose calculated results, hit the space bar again, and then maybe I'll just set it to one and then click on OK and I'm good to go. So again, I was able to use the set field script step and I was able to set both parts and I never actually had to leave the keyboard. Now again, there are exceptions to the rule if I had to change the context. So like the table, for example, then there I might have to. If in the calculation I wanted to choose fields or double click on certain calculation functions, that's where I would stay to the mouse as well or the trackpad. 
Now I'm not sure how other developers work, but I know that every so often I forget to add something. So maybe I meant to do something before setting the field. Maybe there was an if statement I needed to add. Well again, I could move up to loop and then go ahead and command return and then keep going. That would be one way. But if I'm kind of in the flow, I don't want to have to go back and forth and remember where I'm going. So I've told you that command return will make a new line below. If I use command shift return, it'll actually make a line above. So now I could go in here and add my if statement. I can scroll down to set field and holding the control key I can actually move set field up a couple of notches depending on how far I want it to go. And then from a mouse trackpad perspective, there's a little icon at the end of a script step whenever there's more that needs to be done. So I can always click on the little sprocket there and that little popover will come up and I can choose to use the keyboard or I can actually just click on these like I could before. The one other one that I wanted to mention was the ability to disable or enable a script step. I think we do that pretty commonly. So if I wanted to comment this out or make it disabled, I can hold the command forward slash will actually comment it out. And then if I were to use the same command, command forward slash, it'll be enabled again. If you're curious about some of the keyboard shortcuts that you can use, there are two menus that I'm going to recommend and that's the view menu and the scripts menu. For the view menu, these are ones that I haven't covered, like closing a tab, closing all the tabs, and then closing the workspace as a whole or the whole window. And then over on the script side, you have the ability to open a script in a new tab, open a script in a new window. Now these are grayed out because I'm currently not selected on the first panel where all the scripts are, but those would be activated if I was over there. And then things like saving a script, and then these are nice too, being able to run a script and then debug a script. So command R versus command shift R. I think these are things that it's going to take time to get used to. I know that I've been developing in FileMaker for almost 10 years, so there are a lot of habits that I have, but I think that once we let go of those habits and form new habits with all these new things that they've given us, I think our scripting is going to be much faster, and I think we'll be able to get around scripts, edit scripts, and just even read scripts better. Hopefully you'll find this true. And I think that for new developers, you have two ways of doing things. You can stick with clicking, which I think is perfectly fine. You can go over here and double click on something to add it to the script. You can add things to your favorites so that you always have them at the top of the list. But on top of that, you can evolve and become a more advanced developer by using these keyboard shortcuts. I hope you find this video useful to help you get through the new script workspace. And good luck with breaking old habits and making great new ones. Please subscribe to the Salient TV YouTube channel. We'll have lots of other great unboxing FileMaker 14 videos, as well as other videos. Thank you so much for watching.